guys to another session today on Verilog and this series is learning Verilog by examples. Today we're going to be talking about single clock FIFA. So before we look at the code and the demo uh, using uh, free tools like Icarus Verilog and GTK Wave, we're going to show you uh, the basic synopsis of what a FIFO is what it does. FIFOs are usually required when the processing rate of uh, the data that's coming into us does not match the incoming. So let's say you're receiving data really fast, but you're processing it a little bit slower, but the data is bursty and it comes in and bursts, but overall sustained, you have enough bandwidth to process data. So all you need to do is put this FIFO so that you can absorb the bursts coming in while your processing engine or your queue processors are able to slowly catch up and you have to make sure the FIFOs don't fill up. So that's a use case. Now in this case, this is a single clock FIFO, which means that we don't have to worry about pointer processing and transferring. But in a future series, we'll show you how the double clock or clock transfer FIFOs work. Now, uh, there is data involved here and there's variable data width uh, and variable address width that this FIFO can handle. And this FIFO also provides full and empty signals. With that, I think it's time to dive into the code. So here we are in the uh, code. And the way the code is set up is that on the top we have this test bench and we'll skip the test bench for now and all the code is available in Bitbucket so uh, don't worry about it you don't need to write down anything just uh, follow along and you can go back later into Bitbucket and grab the code and I'll leave the pointer to the uh, code in the description so with that I guess uh, let's look at the first component which is required to build this FIFO and that is this memory element in our case, we have used dual port RAM, and it's to keep it extremely simple, we have a write port and a read port. Normally, you can have both write and read ports, and uh, that's the most common scenario, and it could be more than two ports, and there are all kinds of RAMs available in the market, and within FPGAs, etc. But to keep it simple, here you can see that this is address data and write enable, and address data and read enable, and this is our RAM. And to show you one thing we have done is that we've kept the data width and address width programmable and that just helps us design any kind of FIFO and not just a hard-coded FIFO. And you can see that once your input output list is defined, all we do is create this memory element. And this memory is just a two-dimensional array. And when you write to it, you write to a memory element and then when you put the address, then the address just reads from that memory address so it's fairly simple and now with that memory element dual port ram defined we can drive uh, we can create an sc fifo sc fifo has a reset clock and uh, data queue and a write and read uh, request signals again the module is parameterized and we have data with an address with defined and we can change those as per our need um, and the other thing I want to mention is that the dual port RAM FIFO, sorry, the model of the memory, if you're implementing this in Altera or Xilinx or any other FPGA family, you can replace that memory model with whatever models available in your uh, device family, and that should make the synthesis go easier. Now here, you can see that we have uh, all the signals defined and then all the registers, etc. defined. Let's skip the status signals for now. What happens is that all we have to do is when the write happens, the address pointer is incremented, and the read happens, the address pointer is incremented, and the uh, and the fill is the other important thing. But uh, but let's see. Once you have incremented the address pointers, the only thing that is required is that the write data is connected with that write pointer into this dual port RAM. And that's all you need to do. Now, when the write happens, first of all, the right pointer is at the right spot. So if the write happens, and at the same time, the pointer is incremented in the following clock so that next time when you write, you don't have to worry about the pointer. 
and then the read happens the same way that when you read it reads from the current address and then whenever the read happens the pointer is then get ready for the next transaction and you increase, increase the read pointer by one now q is basically the output of this uh, dual port ram flop by one time that is the assumption in our fifo so all you do is just uh, whenever the read happens you clock the q based on the internal data that you're reading from this memory and so that is the single clock FIFO. Now, I also show you here the test bench, and test bench is also available here. All we do is instantiate this SC FIFO. We create our clocks and reset, and then we drive the data. Uh, first of all, we drive it, initialize. Once you come out of initialization, we write 35 and then 45, and then we try to read them back and see if that works. And also here, we dump the uh, signals into the sc54.vcd file. So with that, we are ready for a demo. Now let's dive into the demo. So here we are in our uh, Learn Verilog Bitbucket folder. And just to see here, we have uh, uh, the sc54 uh, system Verilog module here. And what we're going to do is first compile it. So I Verilog uh, and sc54 dot sv file and what this does is creates the a dot out file and if you run the a dot out uh, that essentially writes the sc54 dot vcd file and the simulation is now complete all you have to do is you can do gdk wave uh, and then you can open up your sc54 dot vcd file and if you do that and uh, then you have your VCD uh, file ready here. And I had already prepared a, a wave file. So you can see that I have this GTKW file, so I can just load that file, but you can uh, essentially, uh, you can, uh, you can uh, load from this left side window, you can load your signals. So now that we have it loaded, um, we can go to the beginning of the simulation and you can see that the reset is still uh, active and then when the reset goes we do two writes uh, 35 and 45 and then later on when we go back and read then a clock cycle later when we issue the read 35 comes out and then 45 comes out and so on and and then eventually the FIFO goes empty because we have read both the elements and so on so um, that's it guys and uh, uh, hopefully you know this made sense and you understood well, how the single clock FIFO works like I said the code would be available in Bitbucket repository and would you can go look at the code or even download and try to compile it Icarus Verilog is freely available you can download a copy of it uh, in your favorite operating system and so is GTK Wave and with those two tools, you should be able to play with the FIFOs without needing uh, a license for a professional simulator. Uh, again, I thank you guys very much for watching the video. And if you liked it, hit the subscribe button. And until next time, take care and bye-bye.